to another episode of Salt Air. I am your host, Janae Andrus. I'm also the Salt Community Manager, and I'm also here with Tom Hatch, the founder and creator of Salt. What's up, Tom? Hello. We're excited to be here. Um, and if you don't want to miss a single episode of us, um, go ahead and hit subscribe at the bottom and don't miss a moment because Tom's all kind of awesome and you don't want to miss all kinds of awesome. Huh, Tom? If you say so. <laughs> yes, I do. So today we're going to talk about some fun stuff. So we've talked about salt grains. We've talked about pillars, but we did kind of an overview and I feel like there's just more there. So Tom, how do you feel about doing kind of a deep dive on salt pillars today? Yep. Yep. We'll see what we can hit. Awesome. Okay. Let's, let's just go deeper than, than before. So now, now I'm just picturing a pillar and you like diving into it like a, like a, what's the duck in the show when he swims in the money? It's not a pillar, but anyway, I'm, my McDuck. brain has totally gone off the rails. Yeah, McDuck. Well, the McDuck. So, uh, anyway, just so you know what visual is happening in my mind. I will have to tell you another time. <laughs> Do what another time? Oh, I've got this hilarious story about Scrooge McDuck and the guy who created the Drizzle database project. But that's, that we'll have to do that another time. We don't have time. Now I feel teased. So thanks for that. Whatever. Okay. Fine. Okay. Another time. <laughs> Meanwhile, salt fillers. Now that they've totally derailed us, which is what I do. That's what I'm here for. So Tom, uh, thoughts and feelings, salt pillars. Back okay. Up. So the thing about pillars is that pillars work, they're very closely related to grains in that they're still a hierarchical data structure. Um, the difference is that grains are generated on the minion by the minion and the pillar is generated on the master by the master. Now the pillar is specifically made to be able to do a number of uh, pretty slick things. A number of these things people don't generally realize. And so the pillar is made one to be able to securely store um, passwords and uh, secrets. So you can have encrypted information in the pillar and then have it only distributed over an, over a uh, encrypted side channel to specific minions. Uh, so this is a very common use case for the pillar is uh, for secret data. Another thing though that people don't understand about the pillar is that it can be used to dynamically generate information on the fly. And so there's an external pillar called vert uh, that I made many years ago that actually allowed, allowed you to dynamically create and sign a bunch of certificates. And so the pillar can actually be used to do some pretty advanced things. And that's in a system called external pillars. The default pillar is that you just put this hierarchical data structure inside of some YAML. So in uh, classic salt fashion, it's easy to use out the gate um, and easy to consume, but uh, is, is very powerful under the hood. And so external pillar allows you to connect the pillar into um, other systems. And so this is where things get interesting. External pillars are just yet another plugin layer because we love plugins. Uh, but like with this libvert example that I just mentioned, they can be used to do things like coordinate distributed key signing. Um, external pillars can also be used to, to populate CMDB databases. So we've got quite a few people who use them for this. So what you can do is make it so that every time the pillar gets refreshed, you can connect an external pillar to a CMDB. Now, what this means is that we can have an external database of all of the information about your infrastructure and fill that database up with pillar information and queries because every, every minion is gonna come back to the pillar when it requests a pillar refresh with all of its grains. And so you can populate those grains with what you want inside of a CMDB and then use the external pillar to populate the CMDB. You can also use the CMDB information to merge data from an external CMDB back into the pillar. This allows you to have an incredibly dynamic data set to configure with because you can have an external data set about those systems that's been defined 
uh, by central IT um, or defined by your administrators of, of the platform, and then take those variables, put them into the pillar and make them available inside of your configuration management system. Um, but at the same time, most CMDBs out there take a long time to populate, but SALT can query your entire infrastructure in seconds to minutes. And so it's really, really easy to populate your CMDB uh, using SALT. And Pillar's one of many ways to do that. And one um, of the benefits of SALT being extremely fast and efficient. Right, right. There's nothing like ridiculous levels of speed. That's right. To make your life easier. It's amazing how much easier life can be when you've got speed and power. To quote Jeremy Clarkson from uh, Top Gear, and the Grand Tour. Speed and power solve many things. Now, I don't know if you're talking about your car or salt, but I've been in your car, so you might be talking about your car right now. So. Yeah, yeah, speed and power solve many things in my car too. <laughs> Valid. So Tom, what is something that you feel like people maybe misuse about pillars or misunderstand about pillars? One of the things that people misunderstand about pillars is also that uh, and this is one of the biggest one of the biggest mistakes that we see inside of uh, salt deployments is that pillars can actually be the biggest uh, computational burden on the salt master, and so they're oftentimes the largest bottleneck to um, to scaling the salt master. And there are quite a few techniques that you can use to speed up your pillars. One, uh, don't dump a lot of extra information that you don't need inside of your pillars. But two, most pillars are generated using YAML. Uh, YAML rendering is really slow. I mean, it's YAML. It's made to be human readable. It's not made for performance. Uh, but we also support being able to store that information, not just inside of YAML, uh, but also inside of JSON or even message pack. And so if you don't need to use, say, Ginger rendering in your pillars, or if you can isolate raw pillar data, uh, then you can store that information inside of message pack, which is something like four orders of magnitude faster uh, at pulling that data out of the pillar. Um, so that's one technique to speed up the pillar. Another technique to speed up the pillar is to use the pillar cache. And so there's a pillar cache uh, that when activated can store the pillar data either in memory on the master or on disk as message pack files so that it gets so that every time the minion requests it doesn't it doesn't have to do a full render it can just do a quick disk hit uh, most people use the on disk um, caching we added the uh, the in memory caching of the pillar uh, primarily for a company that had ridiculous levels of RAM in their systems uh, because they're being used for a very special purpose. Uh, I also think that the pillar caching has been tied to the caching, the pluggable caching backend, which means that all that pillar information can be cached, uh, all that pillar information can be cached fully rendered uh, inside of uh, some third-party systems such as Redis or Memcache, which again, significantly speeds up the salt master. And so, yes, it's uh, a computational bottleneck, but as with virtually every computational bottleneck inside of salt, we have worked very hard to figure out a way to make that manageable. So to sum up your advice, you would say, don't fill up your pillar with things you don't need. And remember that YAML is a Kia and SALT is a Porsche. Is that kind of where you're at? Uh, yeah. I mean, that sounds good to me. Um, okay, Tom, that was fantastic. We're she out of time. Nice cars, though. Uh, okay, that was fantastic, Tom. Thank you for giving us so much more insight on pillars. Um, appreciate it. Hope you catch us next time. SALT Air is here every week. So join us and have a good one. Bye.